So we're back at the saltwater just like you guys asked us to. For some reason you guys love watching our saltwater videos so we're going to start doing more of those. We drove about two and a half hours this morning to get to Delaware. It's an awesome looking place. I like Delaware because it's pretty close and there's a lot of fish here. So today we're just going to be catching some dinner. So we're talking about should you keep a fish and bring it home and cook it and eat it for dinner? Like is that okay sometimes or when when should you throw the fish back in the water and you know let it get bigger and let it swim around? This is why we use sabiki. This, my friends, is a croaker. And it's called a croaker because listen. It's croaking. It's a really easy fish to catch. They're a very common fish, but uh, they're all over this place. So, should you keep a fish or not? And what kinds of fish can you keep? What kinds of fish shouldn't you keep? That's that's an argument that a lot of people have. But I really think it all depends on where you're from, where you grew up, and uh, what kind of family you're from. I come from a big Chinese family of like 15 to 16 people, and you better believe grandma loves eating fish. Like she literally eats the entire fish, like head and everything. She will pick a fish clean, let me tell you. When I, every time I go fishing, my grandma's always coming back and asking, Brendan, where's the fish? I saw pictures, but how come you didn't bring it home? And I'm like, well, grandma, like that's just that's just largemouth bass. You don't want to eat that. Oh no, I eat. I'll eat. It's not a problem. I was like, no, grandma. Here's the problem. I want to catch that fish again later. And that's just something that my family really hasn't been able to understand is that I release the fish because I want to catch them again later. I want I want to continue the sports fit. What? That's not true. What? It's not true. I didn't say you have to catch fish every single fish. I said grandma. Oh, grandma. So you were just listening in for no wow. reason. Anything bigger than this, you have to keep. No. Yeah. No. What? You need to. You need to eat that. Okay. You see. Way. You see. Here. Here's. You know, I just. Look I, at India. You know they don't have food. Okay. And that's here true. And you catch a fish, and you don't even eat it. And that's right? the other side of the argument, it's life, which I. It's life cycle. <laughs> okay. So. <laughs> All right. What you got there? Whoa, no, 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 bring it up. Whoa! Aaron, good job. What is this? It's a sea trout. I think this is a sea trout. Nice! It's so cute! It's so cute! It's so cute! How did that feel? You said this is a big one, huh? Yeah, yeah, I felt it pulling. Whoa. It's shaking on the line. Look at his little teeth. That's so cute. One of those, you lucky. <laughs> High five. <laughs> it was really fun. So I don't know anything about sea trout really. A lot of times I kind of just throw my sabiki out there and I catch a lot of different kinds of fish. I have no idea what they are. I like catching them. That's what I like. So if you guys would inform me what kind of uh, diet a uh, sea trout has or some cool facts about sea trout, that'd be really nice. So comment below. This is what happens when you leave your crap everywhere. The wildlife and the birds, they eat it. They get tangled in it. It's so sad. That upsets me so much. People just leave their stuff around and they don't even realize what a mess they're making. I think we're gonna try to call someone, some wildlife rescue for this bird, see if we can get someone down here to can handle the situation a little better than we can. <sighs> Always cry for no reason. This is a, a topic I, I'm pretty interested in talking about because I've got some people asking me, telling me that fishing is cruel and fishing is um, is bad for the environment. Well, I agree to that. I agree with that to a certain extent. So, fishing is bad for the environment, but the thing that's really bad for the environment is that commercial, industrial, you know, the big companies getting out there and taking all the fish even though they're going extinct. We interrupt this broadcast to bring you 45 seconds of Real Talk. 
Basically, when we overfish, we mess up the ecosystem. Two good examples of this. The North Atlantic cod. So in the 17th century, people actually said that you could walk across the ocean on the backs of the North Atlantic cod. That's how many of them there were. People fished them so much that they were overfished in the 90s. Their population was down 99%. Shark finning. They, they catch them just to cut their fins off, then they throw them overboard because they don't want the extra weight of the fish on board. So, cow nose rays, who have formed a major component of the shark diet, do not have nearly as many predators. They're eating all the bay scallops and also causing an environmental and economic catastrophe. These kinds of things are common when you're talking about overfishing. Just got a really, really, really big pull. What is that? So, I remember growing up as a kid, um, seeing uh, only pictures of my great of my grandpa, which is your father, and he'd always have these big fish. I never I've never met my grandfather, and um, from pictures, he's a legendary fisherman. My memory of my father was he's sitting home in the patio, actually making his own um, spears out of playing wood. I, I thought everyone fish, basically. He has other suit at home, I remember seeing it. So what you're saying is he, he used to go scuba diving and spear fishing. For, yeah, for the, for yeah the... but he also does regular fishing, like he'll go out a boat, he'll be gone for three days with a bunch of guys. Everyone fishes differently, um, everyone has different, I guess, values. Okay, so, what would you so, call that? So I would say they're a country who go fishing because they need to eat that set of yeah. food. They eat every single thing. We eat everything. <laughs> I can under, I can totally understand both sides. I love eating fish. I love bringing home fish for my family. I love cooking the fish. Anything in nature, we really should respect. The only thing we can do as fishermen is try and leave no trace. I said it. You there? You there? Sea trout, bring it up. Another, you caught another one. Bring it over. Swing it over. This Whoa. Nice job, Aaron. Thank you. So when you see me keeping fish, I'm not keeping buckets full of fish. It's not like I'm keeping like way too many past my limit. There's limits on how many fish you can keep. Police officers out here regulating that. Thanks for watching guys. If you liked what you saw, please like and subscribe. So I got some big news. We just booked a place to Montauk, New York to do some striper fishing. And that's supposed to be amazing. But I don't really know what I'm doing there. I'm gonna be going off of YouTube tutorials and it would be awesome if you guys could comment below what to expect, what do I need to bring, what kind of lures, just anything that I, you think I should know. We also booked a place in Pulaski, New York, which is way upstate New York. We're going to be doing some salmon fishing in the Salmon River, and it's going to be really awesome. This is something I've always wanted to do, and um, it's going to come true. So stay tuned for more stuff, guys. Um, if you subscribe, you will get some awesome fishing content, fishing adventures, fishing stories, fishing tips every week. Subscribe and join us on our fishing adventures.